ආවරණ කළා මේ අතර කොවිඩ් 19 වෛරසයට බොහෝ සමානකම් දක්වන නව වෛරසයක් හේතුවෙන් ඇමරිකාවේ කුඩා දරුවන් සියයකට ආසන්න සංඛ්‍යාවක් අසාධ්‍යව රෝහල් වල ප්‍රතිකාර ලැබෙනවා මෙම නව වෛරසය මගින් වයස අවුරුදු 10 ට අඩු දරුවන්ගේ ප්‍රතිශක්තීකරණය ශීඝ්‍ර ලෙස හීන කරන අතර විදෙස් මාධ්‍ය වාර්තා කරන්නේ ඊයේ දිනේදී නිව්යෝක් නුවර කුඩා දරුවන් දෙදෙනෙක් එම නව වෛරසය ආසාදනය වී මිය ගොස් ඇති බව We're going to turn now to an eye team update a Queens Children's Hospital says it's seen a four it's seen 40 cases of a rare inflammatory syndrome that is a suspected link to COVID-19. That's more than triple the amount of patients the hospital previously reported. News 4 investigator reporter Melissa Russo broke the story last week. Joins us live this afternoon in Murray Hill with an update. Melissa. Stefan, as more doctors, hospitals, and family members come forward to describe what they see as a new pattern of life threatening inflammatory disease in children, it's really starting to bend the previously held perception that children do not get very sick from COVID 19. When 12 year old Juliet Daly got sick and went to a Louisiana hospital with stomach pain, her mom did not suspect coronavirus. Her lips were blue and her arms were cold. Juliet did test positive for COVID 19 and her symptoms grew worse. Her heart rate started dropping even more. It went from 40 to 20 to zero. And they called a code and they did two minutes of CPR on her. And thank God they were able to bring her back. Thankfully, Juliet is recovering now, but she's not alone. Doctors around the world and right here in our area are working urgently to understand a serious new inflammatory syndrome caused by COVID 19 in children. We just admitted another two last night. I have six in my intensive care unit right now who fit this criteria. And what's most alarming is that. Can、um, lead to severe heart illness. At Cohen Children's Hospital in Nassau County, doctors started counting these cases about a week ago. Dr. James Schneider says he's had 17 cases in his ICU and a total of about 40 children with similar symptoms since the pandemic started. Enough cases that his hospital is opening a special call center to try to field referrals. At other local hospitals, the I team has confirmed several more cases. Last night, Mount Sinai Hospital put out a warning to parents to watch out for symptoms like rash, vomiting, red eyes and lips, swollen hands and feet, and fever for several days. With concerns mounting, thousands of leading doctors from around the world joined a virtual meeting Saturday with the CDC and the World Health Organization, now tracking this unusual condition in children. The most important part of this is awareness, spreading the word. So,、um, news shows like your own、um, are really helping to, to get the word out there. For several days now, I've been asking the city and the state departments of health for any information that they have on this. So far, they have not been able to provide us with any numbers that could give us a sense of just how widespread this problem is in our area. We're live in. Kawasaki disease is a type of vasculitis that affects medium blood vessels. It was first discovered in Asia by a doctor named Tamasaku Kawasaki. And since then, it's been noted to affect mostly children of an Asian descent. As I mentioned, it was first discovered by a doctor by the name of Tamasaku Kawasaki in January of 1961. With the first diagnosis, he actually had no clue what was going on, but he did note that patients typically had a fever, along with a body rash and rash elsewhere. The rash seemed to affect the mouth, the eyes, And on the palms and the soles. He also discovered that some rash was a body rash. When Dr. Kawasaki first saw this disease, he didn't know what it was, so he diagnosed fever of unknown origin. This is a blanket term given when a patient has a fever that is not found to have a diagnosis. However, after encountering a lot of patients with rash in their mouth, red eyes, maybe on their body, and on their palms and soles, Dr. Kawasaki decided to publish about this disease, and thus we have the name Kawasaki disease today. Now, Dr. Kawasaki stated that since the symptoms were so clear cut, he felt that they were pretty close to a discovery of the cause, but unfortunately today we actually still don't understand what causes Kawasaki disease. And the geographic and genetic influences are still really unknown. Now, as the years have gone on, 
Kawasaki's disease has also been given the name mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. And that's quite a very long description, but it actually really makes sense based off of the findings uh, and symptoms. The word mucocutaneous refers to mucous membranes. Mucous membranes are wet surfaces such as the mouth, and cutaneous refers to skin. So, for example, skin on your hands or on your feet or on your body. Another mucous membrane affected is the eyes. Now where does the word lymph node come from? Well commonly in this disease you can see swelling of nodes in the neck. These are lymph nodes. Specifically they're known as cervical lymph nodes. Cervical means neck. Now as I mentioned earlier this is a medium vessel vasculitis. A vasculitis is an inflammation of blood vessels. And it's believed to be caused by the immune system, though why the immune system decides to damage the blood vessels in this disease is really not known. The diagnosis is essentially based off of the clinical symptoms that you see. You can see red eyes, which is known as conjunctivitis, a more prominent redness of the mouth, this is oral erythema. You may see redness of the palms and redness of the soles. And you may also see a red body rash. So the common theme in this is rash, red rash. So now if we see some sort of rash or redness, and we also see a fever more than five days, and a child is less than five years old, you should be thinking about Kawasaki disease. Now this is actually a disease that's very important to diagnose early. The reason for that is you can see symptoms affecting the heart if this disease continues for a longer period of time. Remember, Kawasaki disease is a vessel disease, inflammation of blood vessels. So if you see damage to some of these blood vessels, you can get clots in the blood vessels of the heart, which causes the heart to not be able to contract so maybe it can contract well up here, but down here, it's not contracting as effectively. Remember, heart cells need blood, and if they're not getting their blood, they're going to die, and they can't contract anymore. This cell death of heart cells is called myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction. This is also known as a heart attack. Along with myocardial infarction, you might have cell death of the valvular muscles. These are known as the papillary muscles of the heart. If you cause damage to these, you're not able to pump blood effectively out of the heart because the valves are damaged and not functioning properly. Something more severe that might be seen is known as pericardial effusion. Pericardial effusion is a collection of blood outside of the heart. This is caused by blood vessel rupture. Blood pours out of the heart because of a ruptured blood vessel and accumulates around the heart. This is a very serious issue. And so it makes sense if you see a kid with fever who's less than five years old and has all these red rashes, you should be very serious about considering Kawasaki disease. Now since we don't understand the cause behind Kawasaki disease, using a mnemonic may help you remember the symptoms. I like to remember a kid on a motorcycle, a Kawasaki motorcycle, driving really fast. And when he drives really fast, he gets his heart rate going really quickly. And he drives a motorcycle using his feet and his hands. And so this may help you remember the rash on the hands and the feet, as well as the heart symptoms. Remember, it's linked to Kawasaki disease.